May is Better Hearing and Speech Month, the time to raise awareness about communication disorders and the role speech and language professionals play in helping their patients improve their quality of life. When you think of speech therapists, toddlers, or school-aged children with speech delays may be the first thing that comes to mind. A lot of their therapy is geared towards play and making it really fun and getting the kids' investment in it as well. Good. How does that feel when it goes down? But speech and language pathologists cover a wide range of issues for people of all ages. We start from infant, you know, in the NICU all the way to end of life hospice care. We're working with babies that have cleft palates and cleft lips, voice, respiratory support with uh, speech. So there's so much more that goes into it than just the speech and language. Julia Taylor works with many babies in the NICU to help them learn how to eat. Swallowing development is a little bit different than a typical full-term newborn. We talk about positioning and pacing and some strategies we can use to help that baby be successful. So how are you doing today, Betty? Within speech language pathology, we cover communication and swallowing. Those are two of the biggest factors for quality of life. <laughs> so that is a sign of it. It probably was going down the oh. wrong way. It's something Betty Anderson has been struggling yeah. with for months. I had COVA first. Then when I got out, I got pneumonia. Her illness made it even more difficult for her to swallow. I got a piece of meat stuck in my throat, so they had to go in and do work on that. She's now having to use a thickening agent for all of her food and water. Do you like it or not? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I take it anyway. Let's try it. We'll see how it goes. Now her speech pathologist, Michelle Masselink, is helping her with therapy to get back to her regular diet. We would do a lot of swallowing exercises, for example, or anything that can help with their swallowing so they are on a diet that is as normal as possible. Help in so many ways. The American Speech Language Hearing Association says 56% of all speech language pathologists work in an educational setting or of some sort, and another 40% are employed at a healthcare facility.